Justine, thanks so much for joining me. And I've got to tell you, I'm so excited to talk about Israel. I've been in a, actually a Bible study and we've been talking a little bit about uh, why Israel should matter. And uh, I've been reading this amazing book that talks about how there have been just so many different attacks against Israel uh, dating back. I mean, the Roman Empire wiped, wiped out Israel and then they came back in 1948. And then just ever since 1948, they've been attacked uh, from every which way. Uh, and, you know, being a Jewish uh, woman yourself, I wanted to get your reaction to what's going on in uh, Israel with the Hamas attack. So, Justine, thanks so much for being here. Certainly. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, and you're completely correct. As, as the Jewish Bible has said, it, the, the Jewish people will always be attacked time and time again, but we will persevere. We will survive and we have survived for thousands of years, no matter how many attempts to exterminate us. And what's happening right now is another attempt at genocide against the Jewish people. There's not really a lot of us left, but um, we, you know, the, the advice that um, my Jewish mother always gives me is, you know, have many Jewish babies repopulate because what we're, we are not backing down. Unfortunately, the anti-Semitism that we're seeing today is anti-Semitism coming from people who claim to be progressive, who claim that in the name of anti-racism, Jews are all white and they're evil and they're privileged and they control the world. Well, that's the same stereotype. That is the same anti-Semitic conspiracy that was peddled by the Nazis, except the only difference is they said that we were not white. So the Jewish people always seem to be whatever the bad thing, the bad current thing is right mm -hmm. now being white is that you'll get attacked for that. So, well, Jews are automatically white. And that's what, that's what the left says. Um, that's the whole reason, um, one of the many reasons, other than the fact that anti-Semitism will always be trendy, but one of the reasons why that there's people are peddling this both sides BS when it comes to Jewish babies being beheaded right now and Jewish women being raped, because they, they want to make this even Stephen claim that, well, you know, the people, the perpetrators that are doing it, oh, they're um, oppressed, colonized people, and um, they're darker skinned, which, by the way, is, isn't necessarily true. Actually, most Jews in Israel are not white, but this is the left rigid ideology. They're peddling the same ideology that, that the Nazis have, have peddled. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm most slightly heartened to see that some liberals are waking up this week, particularly Jewish liberals who supported Black Lives Matter are now saying, wait a minute, maybe the right was right about Black Lives Matter because they're, the, the sickening thing is, is that they, we've known, I've known that they were a terrorist organization, but they actually defended Hamas. They actually made a flyer with a picture of a paraglider mm -hmm. celebrating Hamas coming into a peaceful festival of, of hippies in Israel and slaughtering and raping women. And they, they flew into that festival through paraglides. So they're, they're celebrating the rape and murder of innocent women. Yep. Th that that, was, and, that, yep. and that was Black Lives Matter. I just want our audience to know that was here in Illinois. Um, Justine, I'm not sure, you know, I know you're probably traveling ever, everywhere, but um, not sure where you're based out of. That's here in Chicago. So um, it's uh, right up north from us. And uh, I mean, it, they they deleted it now. So it, it it's amazing the backlash they got from it. But, um, you know, right when this all started to happen, the U.S. Office of the uh, Palestinian Affairs, they also tweeted out that, hey, Israel, don't defend yourself uh, against the Palestinian uh, attacks against Hamas. Uh, that's the that's coming from our U.S. government. And then they shortly after uh, had to delete that tweet as well. So I'm not going to, you know, take them at the deleting. Right. I'm going to take them at, hey, this was their initial reaction to these attacks. This is how they truly feel about the Israel people and about Jewish people. They're anti-Semites. Right. You're you're correct. The reason they deleted those photos and, and those fires and those statements is because they got a lot of backlash. They they didn't realize they would get backlash, but they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to also ask you a little bit about um, 
you know, I, I, I'm sure you've been, you've been to Israel. Yes. So uh, I, I wanted to ask you, Palestine, is it even really a country? I, from what I understand, it's all territories. And this is a far extremist uh, a terrorist organization that runs these territories. And uh, they actually have a quite, quite a lot. It's a big swath of the land. I just read, um, you know, this, uh, the statistics here, it's like 99.9% of the land is, get, has, has been given to and is uh, given to these 300 million or so uh, Arabs, Muslims, people who aren't Jewish. And then you take a look at Israel, it's one sixth of 1% of the land that they occupy and there's only 8 million Jews. So you tell me, Justine, I, I, I don't know. The numbers don't lie. I think that yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you are the minority in this. Uh, the, the Jewish people are the minority here. Exactly. There are almost 30 Arab countries in the world. There are over 50 Muslim countries. And the one, there's only one Jewish nation in the world. And that's the only nation that is told every day they have to somehow justify their existence. Mm -hmm. Palestine, it isn't real. Palestine is actually a term that was derived from Philistine. Um, and there's a Hebrew word for it. And the Hebrew word meant invaders. And when the Jewish Whoa. people were being, you know, when we were being taken over in, uh, in Israel by the Greeks and, and, and the Romans, they actually used the term to fight the Jews when they kicked us out. So the term actually means invaders. So people who claim they're Palestinian, well, they're calling themselves invaders. And honestly, they wouldn't be wrong because the, the Arabs colonized most of that region. And the Jewish attempt to, to, have the, to take the Jewish state back, to take our ancestral homeland back, that is an act of decolonization. Yeah, well, and, uh, you know, I, I was reading about all of the different offers uh, that the I Israel has given. Uh, there's been so many different land offers in exchange for peace. But time and time again, so the latest offer that I was reading about was this time where, you know, 96% uh, of the West Bank um, it was given uh, over to the Arabs and given over to... Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, and then Gaza has already been given to the Palestinians in 2005. But there's been yeah. so many different offers throughout history. It, so they're trying, they're trying, but it's just never enough. And then they decline the offers. So why would somebody who claims to be occupied when they're offered land uh, for peace in exchange for peace, why would they deny that? Right. Um, in the very, in the very, very beginning, Jews were actually offered 10% of the land, um, and the Arabs would receive everything else. And the, the Jewish leader said, yes, okay, fine. Just like any little piece of land we can get. Arabs said no. And they've continued this throughout history. They've, they've continued to say no, because the truth is their leaders, they, they don't want, they don't care about having an Arab state, they, they just want to wipe Jews off the face of the earth. They just don't want any Jews in that region at all. And, mm -hmm. and in Hamas's original charter, they say they want to wipe the Jewish people into the sea. And Hamas, by the way, it, it was a terrorist, it is a terrorist organization, but it uh, formed a little more recently and they, they were really, they were elected by their own people. And, and then you have people say, oh, well, you know, you don't know if the election was rigged. Well, in 2021, it, a study showed that a majority of people in, in the Palestinian territories, they support Hamas. They still support Hamas. Mm. Yeah, and uh, uh, there's even more than just, you know, this land taking taking away of land. And I wanted to also uh, talk about this, the... The idea of uh, BDS, have you heard of this movement uh, where, I mean, it stands for, I think it's uh, Ban, Divest, and Sanction? Boycott, di oh, Boycott. Boycott, Divest, and Sanction. Um, and that entire movement, it, it actually was started by Palestinian terrorists, but 
college students and college professors and young activists, they've, they've taken it up. And honestly, I don't even know if a lot of the students who support the BDS movement understands where it comes from. The goal is to completely choke out Israel of any resources. Obviously, that's not going to work. But it's pretty discriminatory against Jewish students on college campuses because what BDS proponents, rigid BDS proponents are doing is that they're saying, well, you know, we don't want our schools, we don't want our school cafeteria to serve kosher foods, certain kosher foods, boycott certain hummus because it all comes from Israel. And worse, sometimes they'll get even more rigid and say, do not hire any Israeli professors. So they're discriminating against an entire nationality. I remember when I was, I was a college student at Syracuse University. It wasn't as terrible as NYU um, or as CUNY or as Harvard. They're all having these giant pro-Hamas rallies right now, this week. <laughs> Actually, today, they're having a, a, a day of jihad on college campuses. Friday, they're having a day of jihad. Oh. Um, but, yep, I remember... My dormitory director in my freshman year of college, he takes up an image of the Star of David on our wall with a giant slash over it. And he taped it up next to a photo of Martin Luther King saying that boycotting Israel is, is equivalent to civil rights and we should be celebrating that just like we should be celebrating Martin Luther King. Well, I told him, wait a minute, Martin Luther King was a staunch advocate for Israel and said that if you believe Israel shouldn't exist, you're an anti-Semite. Um, and then later, I, I got death threats. I couldn't even return back to school senior year, partially because I spoke out against attempts, student attempts to get a professor fired because she is a Zionist, because she is Jewish and she believes in her ancestral homeland and just the fact that they have the right to exist. Yeah, well, that's all Zionism really is. That's just the belief, right? I would be considered a Christian Zionist, right? The belief that Israel should exist and they have the right to defend themselves. Um, and look, it's, it's all biblical, right? Uh, in Ezekiel, for I will take you from the nations, gather you from all lands and bring you into your own land. So this, of course, was in Ezekiel. Uh, it was prophesied that the Jewish people would all gather. And I think that it started out as like 2 million. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Justine, um, 2 million people. And then it escalated to like 8 million people. And the Jewish people wound up being able to get a nation, but it's being taken away from them right now. But uh, I think there's this supernatural uh, thing about Israel being able to survive. And I, I God has like some sort of um, uh, protection uh, for Israel. Right. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's certainly true. Um, God said, you know, if you bless Israel, if you'll, you'll be blessed. If you curse Israel, you'll be cursed. Mm -hmm. And, and I think we're seeing that right now. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm very hopeful that Jewish people, we, we have perseverance and I don't think the, the strong Israeli, I actually interviewed someone at the pro-Israel rally in New York the other day. And she was a young girl. She was a student. And she said her whole family is in Israel right now. And they're hiding in bomb shelters. I asked, well, are they thinking about temporarily leaving to stay safe? And she said, no way. That is our land. We are not going to see. We're not going to let them scare us away. Mm. Oh, man. And I, I, I'm curious, Justine, uh, being Jew, do you have family over there? Or, or is all your family here? Luckily, most of my family, all my family's here. I have some friends who are in Israel right now. I actually have a friend whose niece, she is, uh, she is a paramedic. She is an IDF paramedic. And unfortunately, the IDF told her that she could not go into Gaza this week to help people who have been brutally hurt because they don't want any more Jewish women to get raped. By Hamas terrorists, mm. and it's so sad because she she has a big heart. She wants to help. She wants to help out, but she can't. And and I understand why they they want to protect their people over there. But uh, the people I've spoken to at these rallies, people I've met, 
people I've met a couple of years ago in there is all right now, they're part of the pro-Israel movement. Some of them are hiding. Some of them, actually, I know Dove Hyken. Dove Hyken, he is a New York, he is former New York assemblyman. I can't believe he did this, but he went, he flew to, to Israel. He's, he went to Southern Israel where the Hamas attacks are, are really ramped up mm-hmm. to, to help our people there to expose what's going on. And I said, Dove, please, please be careful. But he flew over there while this was happening purposely to, to help out, to be with his people. So right now I'm praying for him. I'm praying for his team that is with him. Um, but the resilience that you have to have to walk in the line of fire and stand up to this, it's just it's amazing. Yeah. Well, big prayers for him. And, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard of Corey Mills uh, rescuing these 32 Americans from Israel amid these uh, attacks. He actually, I think, is a Republican out of Florida. And uh, it was quite incredible, that story as well. I mean, there's good coming out of this because you can start to see uh, people banding together and trying to help the uh, in, help Israel. Uh, so one thing, I mean, I mean, one thing would be, I was trying to think of ways, uh, to help, uh, our, our, our Jewish brethren and, uh, Israel, or is there any way we can help in any kind of way, uh, that you can think of? I know that there's these like little boxes and it's a website. I'll share it with you guys on our Facebook page, but, uh, I, you can buy these boxes and it's just like wine and, uh, oil, olive oil or things like that. And you can buy, uh, from Israel to kind of combat this BDS movement, the boycott, the divest and sanction. Uh, so buying from Israel, buying uh, Israel products. Is there any other uh, ideas that you have, Justine? Well, that's a great idea. There's also there's also charity groups coming out where people can donate, people can make a donation and will go to Israeli soldiers who are fighting, um, but it will also go to civilians it will go to people who, who need shelter. Um, but the, the way I'm advocating for my people, and I think the way that other people should advocate for Israel and, and for Jews is to show, unfortunately, to show what's going on. And that means by showing, sending your friends all those gruesome videos that you're finding that's coming out of Israel, as, as heartbreaking as it is, you don't want to look at it, but... People need to know what's going on, just like we needed to know what went on during the Holocaust. It's the same thing. The world must know. And I know a lot of people, are, they don't want to look at these gruesome videos. My own mom, I sent her some videos of women being brutally murdered, babies. And she's like, oh, please don't send me more. Don't send me more. Um, but people who, who just, they hear, oh, both sides. Oh, when so they're both fighting, whatever, some war in the Middle East, they always fight. They need to see these photos and videos to understand the attempted genocide against Jews because this is a, not a both sides situation. If, if we were talking about any other identity group, any other minority group, we would, when we spoke about Ukraine, when the world spoke about Ukraine, everyone was all out for Ukraine. Everyone was all out for, 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 victims there but for some reason when it comes to jewish victims it seems like the world always just kind of sticks their head in the sand um but that being said i'm hopeful because people like you and and proud americans people a lot of people on the right um but now even people who were more liberal are recognizing what's going on and and firmly supporting Israel. And um, it was actually so great to see when I was at that giant rally in New York the other day, there were thousands of people there and there were Jews, there were non-Jews, there were Christians, there were some Muslims, there were people from all walks of life that said enough is enough. So I think that the best way to advocate for the Jewish people there is to show the world what's going on the world that might not necessarily know mm-hmm. now oh, one more quick and then we'll then i'll let you go i know you're very busy uh th- you mentioned ukraine and you know recently i'm sure you saw the canadian uh parliament they celebrated an actual nazi uh on their house floor 
And I mean, there was thunderous applause for this guy. How did that make you feel as an American here uh, or as a as a Jewish woman? And uh, like, wait a second, we're actually supporting the Nazis Ukraine. Uh, I, I just couldn't believe it. And I think that there is this, um, this faction within Ukraine. They are, uh, there's Nazis, uh, that are rooted in the Ukrainian government there. Uh, if, for example, the Canadian, uh, government, they celebrated this guy for his efforts against Russia or whatever. And I, I just, I, I found it appalling. It's almost like, um, there's people out there, the, the, the times have changed. Yep. Where they're celebrating yes. Nazis instead. That that's the funny thing. The people who were all gung ho for Ukraine, they claim to be progressive, they claim to be tolerant and for peace. And they were the you would see them as the ones rallying against Nazism when it came to right wingers and this whole conspiracy about all conservatives being Nazis. Yet they're the ones celebrating actual Nazis. And you'll probably find that some of the people are some of the people who supported Ukraine and um, railed against these right wing Nazis. They're the ones who are peddling both sides when it comes to what's happening in Israel right now. It's so hypocritical. And when I saw that Nazi being honored, it, it just confirms it just confirms my belief that the people who some of these people who are advocating just blindly advocating for Ukraine with with, with no knowledge, they, they're they accidentally supporting Nazis. Maybe they knew and maybe they just didn't care because they're just so blind. Mm. It's, it's really a sight to see. Mm -hmm. Well, Justine, thank you so much for joining me here on the radio program. I so do appreciate it. Justine Murray, she's a TPUSA ambassador. Go find her on Instagram. Find her on uh, 